Hello, this is uh, an introduction to Chapter 5, Linear Regression. The, the whole idea of Chapter 5 is uh, taking a scatter plot and then finding a line that can be used to model the data. And back in Chapter 4, you learned about scatter plots. Here's a, here's a scatter plot, just some generic scatter plot. They, they look like this, and you have your, your x variable, whatever that is. You have your y variable, whatever that is. And you learned about scatter plots and how to describe them and so forth and interpret them back in chapter four. But now we want to take this one step further. Is it possible to make a line going through the set of data that gets as close to as many of these points as you can? Um, that line is called a least squares regression line. Um, that's the full name for it. Often people just say regression line, but uh, I'll go ahead and use the full term here, least squares regression line. Sometimes it's also known as a best fit line because that's exactly what it is. It's a line that, that it's the best fit of, of this data. So two, two words for the same thing, but this is the official name of this line. So chapter five is all about how do you figure out an equation for this line. So first, uh, a, a couple minutes of a quick refresher on graphing lines. So you probably learned from algebra class, uh, maybe high school, maybe uh, math 98, or wherever, wherever you learned algebra, you probably learned this formula. Y equals mx plus b. And you probably learned that m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. For example, if you have an equation y equals, say, 2x plus 7, that means you, as all good algebra students do, you, you make an x and y coordinate system. You find the y-intercept is 7. So you, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's your point. And then your slope is 2. So you, from this point, you go up 2 over 1. You've got yourself another point, and there's your line. Okay, so that's how you do it in algebra. In statistics, we do things a little bit differently. First of all, you're never going to have a nice, easy equation like this. In statistics, you're more likely to find things like y equals, say, uh, uh, 2.094x plus uh, 8.941. You, it, it, that's just the way data works. It's, it never divides nicely. It always is messy decimals like this. Also in statistics, we put a hat on top of the y. There's a good reason for that. Um, if you say y, that implies an actual data point. So for example, let's say someone says y equals 5. Well, that means that there is an actual measurement in the in the laboratory or in wherever and someone actually measured five milligrams or five centimeters or five dollars or whatever it is that your y coordinate is so that's actual data these lines or excuse me these uh, equations they are used only to model what the real data is let's take a look back at our uh at our um scatter plot here the equation of the line is just a way of modeling and predicting what data points would be. And so for that reason, in statistics, anytime you're, you're coming up with predictions of what your data think it would be, that means you put a hat on top of it. So for example, if you say y hat equals 5, that means you think, based on the model and, and, and so forth, you think, that y is going to be 5. So you would call that a, a prediction. Or predict or a predicted point. All right, so that that's that's a little bit of a difference between the way we write it in statistics and the way we write things in algebra. Now also in statistics, we don't have to use x and y. You'll you'll see this in the textbook uh, from time to time. Instead of y equals something x plus something you'll see something like this. You'll see something perhaps um, uh, income 
uh, put a great big cat over the whole thing there, equals something perhaps like uh, 47, I'm just making this up here just for an example, 47.93x, uh, oh, excuse me, not x. If, if I'm going to have y be a word, then uh, the x would have to be a word too. So maybe x is age. So something like times the age, maybe put that in parentheses so it's clear that it's multiplication, plus say 486, some, something like that. Um, but just to be generic, you can use x and y. Now there's one more difference that is particular to, to this textbook here. Um, the the y-intercept, the 8.941, comes before the slope. And so, for example, back to this equation right here, y equals 2.094x. Instead, you would write it out as y hat equals 8.941 plus 2.094x. And there's no particular reason. It's just this author wanted to put the winder step first and then the slope second. Furthermore, the author uh, gives names to these. Uh, the author calls this A and calls this B. So if, if you look on page 130 of your textbook, Here's the, f here's the generic formula that the author gives. He says y hat equals a, a excuse me, plus bx. So the author is using b for slope and a for y-intercept. So it might be a little bit weird calling b the slope. Back in algebra, b was always y-intercept. But now we're calling b the slope. And that's just, that's just the way it is in this textbook. And uh, keep in mind, it's the structure that you're looking at. It's the thing that you multiply by the x, that's your slope, and it's the thing that you add on, that's the y-intercept. All right, let's take a look at page 130 of the textbook. Here is the formula in the book. So we start with uh, the, 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 the generic formula of a straight line, uh, y hat, let me and delete that there, uh, y hat equals a plus bx. Notice it's the same structure as the good old mx plus b, but like I, I previously explained, it's just turned around a little bit. And how do you figure out the slope and the y-intercept of these least squares regression lines? Well, it turns out that the slope of a least squares regression line is given by this formula, b equals r, times the standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x. And then the y-intercept, the, the a, is equal to the mean of the y minus b times the mean of the x, b being whatever you just calculated right here. Now, we'll do an example uh, later on, on using these formulas. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about where the heck are these formulas coming from. So let's go back to our our other screen here. I think I'm going to uh, start with a new, a new screen. All right, so there's two basic facts you need to know about least squares regression lines. Uh, and the first is related to slope. Um, if r equals 1, then if you have a least squares regression line, so you have your scatter plot. Here's your least squares regression line right here. It turns out that if x goes up by one standard deviation, then y goes up one standard deviation. Let's write that out here. If x goes up by one standard deviation, of course, that's a standard deviation of x, whatever that is. Uh, age or income or whatever it happens to be, um, then y also goes up by one standard deviation. So think of it as standard deviation being like the, the, the measuring sticks or the units of measure. So once again, it, you have your least squares regression line. The slope of the line is, 
It's a ratio of standard deviations. As f x goes up by one standard deviation, then y goes up one standard deviation. All right, so that means that the slope then is going to be the ratio of the standard deviations. S y, the standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x. Now, of course, r is never equal to 1 because uh, r is usually like 0 0.9, 0 0.8 something, 0 0.7 something. And so it turns out that that r is sort of like a, a, a damper, in a sense, on, on your slope. And so r causes the slope to be lower than it otherwise would have been if you had a perfect linear relationship. So in general, uh, your slope of your least squares regression line is going to be r times sy divided by sx. All right, that's, that's fact number one, and that's where that first formula in the textbook comes from, right there, except the author calls b, uh, b is, is your slope. Now, the second basic fact about least squares regression lines that help us understand these formulas is that the least squares regression line always goes through the points x, x bar, y bar. Now, that's not necessarily a, a, a data point, and it usually isn't. But wh whatever that least squares regression line, whatever it looks like, say it looks like this, there will be a point on that line that is x bar, y bar. So then, if you remember from algebra class, if you have a point, on a line and you know the slope of the line, then you can figure out the y-intercept of the line. And so we have the y-intercept, which is 0a. Remember, the author is calling the y-intercept a here. And we have the slope, and we have the point x bar, y bar. OK, so use whatever favorite technique you want to figure out the equation of a line. Um, I'll just do this. I'll just say. Uh, the slope, just definition of slope here. So slope is rise over run, which is y bar minus a divided by x bar minus 0. All right, do a little bit of uh, algebraic uh, gymnastics here. x bar minus 0, of course, is just x bar. And then multiply by, by x bar. So I'm going to have b x bar equals y bar minus a. Um, and then uh, move the y bar over. So I'm going to have negative y bar plus bx bar equals negative a. Multiply the whole thing by 1. I'll get um, y bar minus bx bar equals a. And that is the last formula that you see there on page 130. So one more time, let's go back to page 130 of the textbook. We have the generic form of least squares regression line y hat equals a plus bx, where b is the slope, r times standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x, and the y-intercept, which we're calling a, is y bar minus bx bar. Notice that's what we had right here, y bar minus bx bar. And that is it for the introduction. The next, uh, uh, my next lesson will be um, question number four from chapter five.